All right, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are making it so we can actually move a character around. And if we press the E key, it'll go to, our, to the next character. And we can just keep going to the next character. And then if we press the Q key, it'll go to the previous character. This is temporary until we can make it so we can switch to the closest player to the ball or we can switch to whichever character in the direction of our input. So like if we're pointing to this guy and we press switch, it'll switch to him or it'll switch to the correct guy, whoever we're pointing at, basically. So we'll do that in the future, but we just wanted to get some basic character switching right now. And kind of surprised I can go through my guys, but I guess that's normal. Uh, I don't really know. But yeah, so let's do some basic player movement and rotation. It's also rotating towards the direction we're moving. Let's do that and some basic character switching. Oh, also, before we get started, you may notice my characters look a little different. I decided to make them cubes instead of cylinders. That way we didn't have to rotate them 90 degrees. And that way I could kind of kind of tell that they were rotating because I couldn't tell that the cylinders, if they were rotating or not. So with these cubes, I can tell that they're rotating. I'm not going to go through and remake it. All you got to do really is just go to the, to the part type and just or block shape part shape i mean and select block or you can just delete it make a new one and just just remake it as a as a block this time and don't rotate it 90 degrees because that'll mess with our script a little bit when we rotate our player towards the direction he's moving towards so anyways with that out of the way go to your starter player scripts right click not right click click the plus button and so like local script, I named mine team controller. So yeah, we're grabbing our variables, our references. I mean, then this was important because for some reason it wasn't grabbing the children of the home team or the away team. And it wasn't, the script wasn't working because of that, because it really needs to grab all the characters in the teams uh, and they will, in order to control them, obviously. So yeah, so just, just make it so while the home team get children equals zero, like basically while it doesn't find any children in the home team, just wait. Uh, so basically just wait until it finds children of the home team. So yeah, I did the same thing for the away team. We also put them in a list of non-controllable players. We don't use that, but I figured it might be good to have later down the road. We set our current player index to be one and our current player to be controllable players just the current player index that we just selected. We can set our move speed right here. I got it on 16. I'm just gonna leave it for now. We cache a move direction. We just set it to vector 3.0. Then we've got a function for switch player. Then we've got a user input service, input began, and we connect the function that's passing in an input and a game process parameters. I'm not gonna explain it. I'll just let y'all look at it, copy it, and we'll move on. Then our user input service input ended. Again, just copy this and we'll move on. And then, and this is our update loop. This is like where all the action is, is happening really. So we need to use our camera's position and move relative to our camera. And I'll show you why we want to do that. That way, if we decide to, to move our camera around later, all of our movement will still be correct and accurate. It won't get inverted. So like right now we got the camera on this side of the game and we can move our guy around and move up left down right if we weren't doing it relative to the camera if we were to flip the camera and put it on the other side and we can do that by going to the camera setup and doing negative 150 and if we hit play you'll notice the red is on the left side now and the blues on the right but we can still move correctly if we didn't move relative to the camera it would be like inverted on one side of the ball like it, it may feel normal but if you were to put the camera somewhere else, it it would feel really weird and it wouldn't be moving the way you wanted it to. So I'm gonna set this back to 150 because I want the red team on the right and the blue team on the left. We calculate the new position. And after that, we calculate and apply rotation. So yeah, just check that out. 
copy that. I'll put this script in the description so you can just copy and paste it if you want to. But yeah, that's that's the script right there, guys. That's that's all we did. That's all we've done other than swap out the characters with cubes. This is all the scripting we've done since the last video. And that should get it to where you can control one character at a time and switch characters on the team. So yeah, we're we're doing good. We're making good progress. The next one, we're going to put a ball down and we're going to try to switch, change it to where we're not switching just to the next character in the list, but rather to the character closest to the ball. Um, if we're not giving input, input when we press the switch character button, we want to switch to the character closest to the ball. But if we are like moving to the left and then and I'm like, man, I want to switch to the character to the left of me. So I'm going to point there and press switch. It actually did it there. Uh, yeah, see how it just goes to the next one. It doesn't go to the to the guy I'm pointing at. Uh, that's what we want it to do, just because that makes more sense. That's going to feel more natural and intuitive for the user. So we really need to get that figured out. So we will attempt that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you over there. Uh, also, one more thing. If you want the project files or you want early access to the rest of this tutorial series, I'm putting it all on my Patreon. Just as soon as I get a video made, it goes on my Patreon. But on YouTube, it gets posted once a week. Go check out my Patreon. And I will see you guys in the next one.